What's up, YouTube? Okay, um, I didn't, um, I'm not trying to, like, do anything crazy where, uh, I use someone who's dead or whatever for, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to establish it before we get started. Because I don't know, sometimes it may come off that way. I hope it doesn't. Um, I want to talk about Chad Gaspard and Hana Kimura. At first, to be honest with you, I wasn't going to talk about Shag Gaspard uh, passing. Because I feel like when people pass, I feel like, me of all people, trying to say something about it, I'm not very good with my words, so I didn't want it to like, accidentally come off the wrong way. And I say something that's like incredibly offensive or damning or horrible. And it happens sometimes when I talk about things that are like big events or something like that. I'll say something and then someone will completely misinterpret what I said. And sometimes it could be a straw man, and sometimes it could be I'm just not saying, I'm not being very effective with my rhetoric. But I'm going to try to be. This is my second time trying to record this video, and I think this time I might have it. Uh, I might be able to say it a bit better than I, I was before. So we have Shad Gaspar first, and um, he passed away in Venice Beach, I think. He was surfing with his son. Big Tide comes in. Sweeps up his son in him, and he has, tells lifeguards to save his son, but in the meantime, uh, he can't be saved. Now, I, okay, this is where I say something stupid, so hear me out. I thought it was kind of strange that it sounded like there were multiple lifeguards. I could be wrong on this. It sounds like there was multiple lifeguards, so it was kind of weird that multiple lifeguards went to go save his son. Like, I could see two, three cool whatever but I don't know how many there were like there wasn't one that could have like tried to help him I don't know I assume not because that's probably why they didn't right and it was a strong current or whatever so that's probably why that didn't happen but Shad's body went up missing and he ended up passing uh, they found him fortunately but just not the way that you know they would have hoped to find him so that sucks um, when I watch, let's talk about just the individual, um, when I saw Shaq Gaspar, the first time I saw him, I think it was 20, 2008, I think, I think that's right, um, in Crime Time with JTG. And I believe at the time I was more so in a, as a fan of Heels. I didn't really like Randy Orton, but I liked Edge, I liked Chris Jericho, right? I liked Christian. Um... But I didn't like, I don't even think Christian was wrestling when, or at least when Crime Time first showed up, he was wrestling at the time. I think when they were like getting towards their end is when he showed up. I'm not even sure about that. Anyways, second on a tangent. I wasn't really too much of a fan of Crime Time. I saw them more so as like a joke kind of tag team. So I was like, I never really thought, thought of them as champions. A lot of people got behind them. A lot of people liked them. So when they faced a team that I wanted to win, it was like, oh, come on, you got to be crime time, bro. You can't lose the crime time. You're going to lose the crime time? Come on now. But then they will win. But they never won the tag team championships. And looking back at it, look back at it in hindsight, I feel like they should have won the tag team championships at some point, right? Because they were a very unique team. And they should have never been broken up, in my opinion. But I don't know. It was a team that stood out, right? It got the crowd to like them. Um, I don't even know how they were doing in merch sales, but it just, it was cool. It was cool to see a team that was different from all the others. It wasn't just like, we're a tag team, we wrestle. We're a tag team from the 80s and we're good. We're, you know, we're, we had like Rosie and Hurricane, which is cool, back, like, before Crime Time. And it was a unique team, right? The Brothers of Deception were a unique team because they were like, they had like lightning and fire, it was like demons or whatever, it's cool. The generation was cool because they were like, rebels to the authority and they would just do whatever they want and it was kind of cool and then you have crime time where it was like i would say they were vigilantes i wouldn't even say they were like robin hood but they would do something bad but they would do it to someone who deserved it and sometimes it wasn't even like they would do something bad it would just like stand up for themselves or stand up for somebody else who needed to be stood up for which was cool and i thought it was like it was something that they were comfortable with doing but it was just like a weird gambit to me. But it was something they were comfortable with doing. So it was fine. 
Um, I was always wondering if they would ever come back to like WWE at any point, and if they were gonna like maybe face the Street Profits or something like that. You know how people like wanted the world's greatest tag team to face Jer Jordan and Gable? It was kind of like that for me. It was like, are they gonna are they gonna have Crime Time come back to face the uh, Street Profits or maybe even the Prime Time players at one point? Anyways, the last time I saw Shad, it was in a video with. Uh, MVP. I never met this guy personally. I never met either of these two personally. But Shad and MVP were very emotional about Kobe Kingston winning Daredevil Championship. And it was cool to see that. It was cool to see, you know, no, it wasn't bitterness or anything like that. It was genuine happiness to see their friend win a championship. And it could have been for any reason. It could have been because he's their friend. It could have been for, um, you know, not a lot of African Americans have won Daredevil Championships, so seeing someone win that is a step in the right direction for their people. My, I guess my people too. Um, and it's really cool. I never really, I never try not to look at it like that. I try to look at humans as a group of people versus like, you know, separating by race or whatever. But it's okay um, if you want to do that. That's okay. Anyways, what do we have? Um, I know that sounds weird, but. I mean, if you want me to explain that, I can explain it. It just, it's just so, it was out of nowhere, right? Like, you, every time I look at Twitter, it's like always something happening. And then that was shocking to see that. And I had a friend who, uh, his stepfather went out the same way. But it was like a boat flipped over and he got lost in the, uh, the water and he couldn't find him. So when I saw that with Chad, I was like, oh, come on, dude, not like this. Um, but... He's, you know, he saved his son in the end. It's something, it's an act of heroism. It shows like how great of a person this guy truly was um, in the in the very end, till the very end. And that's something that you can respect, you know. Every time you think about him, like passing, you can think about, you know, self-sacrifice. It's commendable. Uh, then we have Hanako Mora, who's um, in stardom. Joshi wrestler, right? I think Joshi means woman. So yeah, yeah, I think it does. Anyways, when I when I watched Stardom, the first time I watched Stardom and when I really watched it, I found Asuka or Kana, and I would watch all of her matches. She became like my favorite women's wrestlers. I would just look up Kana versus and I would watch it. It was always really good. Like her matches with Siri. I think she um, I think she may have faced Io at one point. I know she teamed with her. But I think she may have faced her at one point too, which is cool. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Asuka had a lot of cool matches. Her matches versus Hikaru Shida I enjoyed. Um, she was how I found Hikaru Shida in the first place, and Io. And then that's how I found Kairi Sane, you know, going down this rabbit hole or whatever. But seeing Asuka, the way she was wrestling uh, in the time period for WWE was like, in TNA. It was like, yeah, these matches are good in WWE and TNA to some extent, whether it be just like kind of good or really good. It was like, in stardom, it felt like they were legit wrestlers. It felt like, how do I put it? When you watch Stardom, it was like, this is a wrestling show and these are wrestlers. You don't look at it like, oh, Diva Surge or TNA Knockouts who are, you know, may dress revealingly, but also be uh, a serious wrestler. It was just like, here they are. They may reveal a little like hips maybe or whatever, or legs and all that. Maybe you can see their breasts or whatever. But at the same time, it's more so focused on different characters, whether it be, I'm Asuka and I whip your ass, you know? Or I'm I'm really quick, I forget her name, but like she was insanely fast or whatever, that was kind of her thing. There was also um, a girl with like a tiger mask who was cool. There was um, Sakura who was cool, not Emi Sakura, the other Sakura who wore pink. She was cool. Um, but anyways, I stopped watching for a bit because I couldn't find any more Kana matches. And she was also in NXT, so I was like, why do I gotta look it up now? I'm good. Connor's right here in NXT. So, in the meantime, I come back because this YouTuber named Post is talking about stardom. He's loving stardom. He's got him back into wrestling. He's falling in love with it. He loves every single second of it. It's his shit, right? He's made a podcast about it. He's getting a website about it. He loves him some stardom, right? And he especially liked Hana Kimura. So when I see that, I see when I see someone, a lot of people gravitate to one person. At some point, I would check them out to see what is it about, what's all the hype about, and 
She's not my favorite wrestler, but she's extremely talented. It's very, very evident that she's a talented wrestler and she definitely understands the art of pro wrestling, right? So it was just kind of cool to see someone in stardom kind of pull me back in. They come out, they pull me back in. I'm like, man, this is this good shit. And I haven't seen a lot of her matches. I just saw her versus B. Uh One of the, I don't know how many times they featured each other. So I saw one match of them facing each other. And I was watching one when I woke up this morning. Um, a match from, I think it was December 24th of 2019. I don't know who she's facing, but I've seen both of these wrestlers before. So it was just cool to see them go at it. They're having some sort of grudge match, as I can tell. As Japanese commentary, so I, I often assume what the story is based off of what's happening in the ring. And it's something that I really like that you can do at Stardom. You don't necessarily have to know what's, what the commentary team is saying because you can see it being translated through the wrestlers, which is cool. Not to say that Stardom's the only company that does that, but they do it very effectively. Anyways. Anyways. Um, she passed away from it. Being cyberbullied online for an outfit that she wore on a reality show? Re wearing ring gear on a reality show? I, I don't even understand. I don't even understand. Like, I don't think it's like, again, I don't know her personally. But in my head, it's like, there had to be more to this, right? This had to be something she was like, she felt horrible for a while. And this was, I, I feel like this could have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But from what I'm to hear about her, everybody, she was a really happy person, it seemed like, I guess, around people, taking pictures with her, hanging out with her, stuff she posts on social media. She's cool and all that. Apparently, she started posting social media stuff where she was cutting her wrist, and someone thought she got hacked. She didn't get hacked. She wrote a suicide note talking about how she didn't want to be human anymore. Um, she loved her mother. She was a great, um, she really liked that she was able to live her job or live her dream I guess of being a wrestler that's my assumption of what she meant by what she was saying um but man social media dude like this is the second time I'm talking about something like this where social media seemingly drove some drove with someone crazy like I say seemingly because again there could be more to this than what we're actually seeing right um my whole thing is that or the thing that gets me the most is why do people do that? I don't, I can't understand. I can't wrap my head around this idea where someone disagrees with something that someone else did. So mob mentality, cancel them, fuck them, kill them. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I'm not saying that everybody has to be this debate lord, um, criticism expert, expert or whatever, right? But it's like, it's just personal attacks and shit because you disagree with somebody. And it doesn't even seem like it was that serious. She just had a wrestling outfit on a reality show and people got pissed about it or something. I don't know the full context, so I could be wrong, but it's so stupid to me. That just keeps happening. Like, how many more people does that happen to before people are like, damn, dude, maybe this isn't the best way to go about how I feel about somebody. And some people actually know what they're doing. And there's other people who just aren't aware, right? Because, you know, people can be very impulsive. I can be very impulsive. I'll say something really dumb and not think about the consequences until after the fact. Or I'll do something really dumb and not think about the long-term effects it could have until after the fact. People do this. It happens. But this is a case where it's like, what were you thinking, bro? Like, why? Why were you obsessing over a mistake that somebody made? Why? Why do you, th why do people assume that online, if you yell loud enough at somebody, if you attack the person late enough, eventually they'll change. What the fuck? I don't understand. Again, I don't have the full context. All I'm saying is this stupid shit that people pull on the internet is so fucking annoying. It's just, 
I don't think I'm saying anything unique, but I just felt, I just, not even, like people say like, you say your opinion on something and then you give a take that everybody gives and then you feel brave. I'm not trying to do that, right? I'm just saying, this is stupid. I hate this idea that people can go online and just attack whoever, whenever, and just think that this is that this is fine. No, no freaking what it like no consequences will come. Nothing bad is gonna happen. I'm just gonna be an asshole today. And on one hand, if you're giving criticism to somebody, that's fine. Legitimate, constructive criticism, even if it's a single line of criticism, it's okay. But there's it's it's a it's more effective ways you can go about so but seeing it's gonna happen it's gonna happen people are gonna do this no matter what i just think if you're watching my videos try to be more intuitive about what you say on the internet try to think about it a little bit more try to be like um i'm gonna say this to this person you know what man maybe i'm not gonna say it like that i'll say it like this you know what man maybe we're not gonna say it to him right now because it seems like he's going through a lot of stuff whatever maybe i shouldn't say anything just like Critical thinking. Think about what you're saying, how it could affect somebody. If you're gonna say something nice, or something that you think is nice, you can say it. And if it's like, oh shit, now I guess they took it the wrong way. Sorry. Or you don't even have to apologize. Hey man, I didn't mean to say it like that. This is what I meant. Stuff like that. Like when people comment on my videos, sometimes I get like negative stuff, but I rarely get anything, because I'm a small channel. I rarely get anything um, that's too bad, right? And usually if someone says something ridiculous, um, I'll delete it because it's on one hand, it's like, they could be joking. So if YouTube sees this, someone else sees this and they're joking, I wouldn't want their whole channel to get terminated because of something they said while they were joking. And it could be a fucked up joke, but still it's like, I don't want anyone to get fucked over like that. So I'll delete the comment. but. Because I would hate that if that happened to me. I would hate that a lot. But um, then sometimes I can tell this person is actually trying to come for me. Fuck you. And I'll respond to it. Or um, I'll delete it. But some people can't handle it like that. Some people are more fragile. Um, not necessarily weak. She said she was weak. I disagree. Some people have that take about... Um, have that take about... Uh, what is it? Mental health. Some people feel like people with, uh, um, what's it called? Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hang on. Some people feel like people who have suicidal thoughts, depression. There you go. Those people are weak. It's conditioning. It's, I think that the human mind can be conditioned to feel a certain way. I don't think people come out of the womb feeling one way. Like, I don't think you'll, you'll turn two and you're like, man, dude, I hate my life. You're two years old. You know what I mean? Like you could, you could maybe, I don't know, but I assume that that's not really the case. It's like over time, like when you're seven, you got bullied in kindergarten and then you get bullied all throughout elementary school. Then you go to middle school and then you make friends and then everybody turns on you. Now you've been backstabbed. Now you're in high school and now you don't have any friends. So now your whole life is just fucked. So maybe you decide at some point during that time frame, you go on social media because it seems like the real world just sucks. So your escape is to go on social media, right? So then you get attacked by people who hate, uh, who hate, um, who, who are just upset with you or maybe they just want to troll and mess around, right? And I'm not entirely against messing with people online. But it's, it's to a certain extent. If you want to mess with someone and you do like a harmless, there's some pranks that are harmless. You do like a harmless prank where you're like, oh, oh, you're looking for this song? Here's a song that's not this song. Whatever, dude, that could be funny. Like if the song's like a funny song or a meme song, that could be fine. Or you send someone uh, a meme when they're like, oh, hey guys, have you seen this thing? I've been looking for this match. And they open the video and it's like a joke or whatever. That could be kind of funny, right? But if you're like, um, oh, you're this sexuality, I'm gonna make fun of you for that. 
Oh, like making fun of something that someone can't control online is pretty fucking gross, bro. Like, come on. But anyways, there's just better ways to do things on social media. Aside from just being a total fucking ass. I don't know. And people are going to continue to do it no matter what. But just, I'm not trying to be woke here. I just, it's dumb. Sorry for like sucking at getting it out probably. Basically what I'm saying is, some people online, this is the only way to escape reality. So saying that they shouldn't be online if they don't like to be cyber bullied, it's kind of a dumb take because maybe this is the only way they can escape a harsh reality that they may have in their lives. Now, not everybody has that, but some people do. So you have to be considerate of that to some extent, right? Or maybe someone could be, someone could be uh, very fragile. And maybe you won't know that initially, but when you figure it out or you see that like they're reacting very emotionally to something that you're doing, maybe it's like time to back off. But if they were like going back at you, it's fair game, probably. They probably don't really mind it, and they're gonna go after you too. Or if they actually do feel personally, they'll probably block you or something. You know what I mean? But by um, but but um, some people. If you have an opinion of somebody that I'm trying to conclude the video, some if you have an opinion of someone that you disagree with, sometimes it's best to avoid that person as much as possible, rather than trying to find them and attack them for whatever they are, whoever they are. Um, some people are monsters. Some people could be pedophiles. They could be racist. They could be homophobic. They could be a mass murderer um, that has yet to be proven guilty or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? It could be a list of horrible things. And maybe you want to attack them for that. Okay, maybe, right? But if you don't, if it's like some alleged thing, like, if you don't have all the facts, you have to be careful. I'm just saying be careful in social media. Try to do your due diligence before you do certain things. Basically. I think that's what I'm, all I'm trying to say. I don't want this to be the whole day. I don't want to talk about this for the whole day. So I'm just going to end the video here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Got any questions? Ask me in the comments below. See y'all later.